So before we get started, there's some important uh, terms related to the design of RF amplifiers. Uh, so the first is gain. Uh, that's pretty obvious. That's the power gain from the, the input. I'm calling that port 1 and the output, port 2. Uh, the next thing is stability. Like I said, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Operating frequency and bandwidth is very important. Uh, you know, when you have a set of design specifications uh, for an amplifier, um, you're going to want to achieve your, your various uh, gain and noise performance like over a certain uh, frequency band, uh, so that's important. Uh, the output power rating, uh, of course, that's important. You want to know, um, you know the capabilities of, of the amplifier. Um, bias conditions, we're not going to talk, we're not going to look at that uh, ex specifically. Um, just keep in mind that the, the approach that we're going to take, I'll talk about this here in a sec, but we're going to be looking at the amplifier block here as uh, from the point of view of its uh, S parameters. And you need to keep in mind that those S parameters are provided for certain bias conditions for the transistors that, that are inside that block. So that's important. We're not going to uh, consider that explicitly, but just you definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, and when, what I mean there is that we're not going to be designing the, the bias networks our, ourselves. Okay, But you, just ha you have to know that they exist, and in practice you, you would have to um, design the, the bias networks. We just don't have time. So at Dalhousie University, we have other classes on uh, you know analog... Uh, circuit design, and, and uh, I'm assuming that you are gaining the necessary skills in, in that in those types of courses. So input and output, output VSWR. This is important. Uh, sometimes you want to have a good VSR uh, VSWR on the input. Sometimes you want to have a good VSWR uh, on the output. So it depends on what your system is is uh, driving. And and uh, so for example, let's say that you have a, an RF front end here, and you're uh, you know injecting energy in, into your system. And let's say the you know the load is an antenna. You might want to optimize your input VSWR in this case because uh, if you have a lot of reflection into your uh, transmitter front end, maybe it could you know cause damage or something like that. So, um, but we'll take a look at that uh, later. Uh, the next thing that's that's important is uh, this concept of noise figure. So this is important in the low noise amplifier stuff, which we're going to be talking about eventually today. We're like I said, we're just talking about stability. So, um, but we're gonna we're gonna get there. We'll talk a lot about noise figures and and um, you know noise performance basically noise figure is it, it's the uh, it quantifies the degradation of the signal to noise ratio in your system so it's the relationship between the input SNR and the output SNR so for example if we assume that this amplifier uh, here is a low noise amplifier uh, on the input there's going to be a certain signal to noise ratio and on the output there's going to be another signal to noise ratio and there's going to be some degradation because of the, you know, the the, the components are going to add noise to the system. So um, the SNR on the output is going to be less than the signal noise ratio on the input. So the noise figure quantifies this and and you know sets uh, constraints and stuff like that. So typically a, a good noise figure is around like one dB. Obviously the expression that I showed here is not uh, in logarithmic units, but. Um, the last two things are the intermodulation distortion and the harmonics. That's related to the nonlinearities of the of the amplifier or of the transistors that are um, that comprise the the amplifier. So we'll take a look at that later too. So these four parameters here: gain, stability, uh, the VSWR, and the noise figure. Uh, they're all affected by the design of the uh, of the matching networks. Okay, so. Uh, you know, the first half of the course basically was uh, learning about transmission lines, the use of the Smith chart, um, and then we went into, uh, you know, matching network design. And the reason we, we took that approach is because, uh, you know, in, in all areas of kind of this RF, like front end system design, matching networks uh, are extremely important. Uh, so not just in RF amplifiers, but also in, you know, mixers and, and uh, oscillators and stuff like that, too. So. Um, that's why we spent so much time on that, um, so we're going to put that to use now. So like I said, we're going to be using the S parameter approach. So this block here in the center is going to consist of a, uh, a transistor. So in this case, I'll draw like a, a FET, okay, where we have a, an input and an output. The transistor stage, you know, the, the active element stage of our, our amplifier design here, um, is going to be modeled using uh, the S parameters, okay, that have been measured for that particular transistor, either by the vendor or, or by by us. Um, obviously, for this course, we're, we're, we don't have that capability right now, so um, we're going to be using S parameter files from uh, vendors. 
Okay, so so what this means is that the S parameters only take into account the linear or the uh, small signal behavior of the transistors, which means that we can't do any of the uh, the nonlinear stuff uh, related to intermodulation, distortion, or, or harmonics. Okay, so there, there's other approaches here for that. Um, the harmonic distortion analysis is uh, common that can be done in QCS Studio. It can be done in um, you know in ADS as well. Um, so we might take a look at that uh, later on when we get to when we get to that section. But um, for now, we're just going to be looking at uh, transistors in terms of their S parameters.